you know, something you touched on earlier kind of was like the environmental kind of things and greenhouse uh, gases and kind of global warming. You know, California has, has tried to do so much. Um, but I guess what I guess what more can we do? Like what more is there to do, uh, you know, on that subject to kind of get us in, a, in an area where, you know, we start seeing results? Yeah, I mean, they said, so the two largest things we can do are wildfire prevention, prevent the release of all of these, you know, I mean, these trees are all holding all of those right. emissions and they just go up in flames. It's really bad for our environment. So I do believe wildfire prevention has to be top of the list for us. But the second is transportation is the largest source of emissions, right? We know that. And so we have to do more and better. And currently, you know, we have a lot of electric vehicle drivers in our our wealthier communities, but it's not accessible to every Californian. Our trucks are not clean right now, and we could move to a clean trucking future, and we should. So how do we really revolutionize transportation to ensure that we are not emitting there? Um, I also think there's a lot we need to do on drought resiliency, right? I mean, we're seeing it right now. The reason that we are in the situation we're in is because it was too hot too fast, right? And we didn't capture enough water. So how do we capture more water? And again, I'll say it, I said it already on this podcast, but how do we keep our water tables clean? How do we put groundwater into the ground and keep it clean so it's accessible to us when we need it? So there is a lot of work still to be done. I know California's leading the way, but trust me, we're not done. And plastics. I didn't mention plastics. Why is California failing to respond to the cry of our Californians and constituents that they want us to regulate plastic? So we got to do that too. You know, wildfire has been a topic, it feels like for a decade, but maybe it's only been five years and we keep increasing funding and doing certain things. I guess, what aren't we currently doing that we need to do more of? Well, I mean, I'm biased because this is what my legislation is trying to do, but I do think um, we do need, you know, we have a real problem with these PG&E caused wildfires. And I think we need to be doing more oversight there. I've said it publicly in hearings. I don't think the PUC is um, sufficiently overseeing PG&E to ensure that we're doing everything we can to stop our lines from causing wildfires. So I introduced legislation two years ago and pushed it again this year that would give our local district attorney's oversight authority over those um, wildfire mitigation measures that PG&E should be putting into place. We need local individuals overseeing this and making sure that we are actually enforcing the laws that are on the books because the laws are there, but we don't have the bandwidth to enforce them. And so we need more of that. Um, So I think that's really big. And then we have to, you talk about the spending, but we're not seeing the mitigation work we need done, right? We're not seeing our forests thinned in the way we need. And that is why these fires are so out of control and go for so long. So we do need to be doing that work and doing it in a meaningful way, which then (laughs) begs the question, what do we do with all that material we're thinning out of the forests? Because that is a real problem and we have to deal with it. And that has been a real controversy in the legislature, but I have been supportive of using it to create energy because we have it, we need to deal with it and burning it can actually be a way to to hold off those emissions and use the energy um, to create alternatives to natural gas and fossil fuels. Make sure you click the button below and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with all our news and updates.